Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers! On this episode of Transmissions, Perfect Effect gives us a real good look at their Jet Power Revive Prime. We see some in-hand images of Power of the Prime's Punch Counterpunch, and a small-scale die-cast G1 Optimus Prime is showing up on retail shelves. Today is Wednesday, September 12th, 2018, and this is episode 294 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that knows, without their toy guy, this show is just three comic guys trying to figure out the backstory of each toy. I'm your host, Daryl, a.k.a. the Cybertronian Beast, and I am joined by the excellent Transmissions team. Yusuf, better known as Yoshi. Yo! And Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, how you doing? Daryl? Yes, sir. I know Charles isn't here this week. I know you don't always host the show, but I just want to make sure that we cover any new donators that we might have, because that's what Charles does at the start of every show. He likes to tell me how many donators we've got. He sends me these text messages behind the scene of like, you know, it's now this much money, so you God can count. God damn it, Yossi! Well, we, can, well, we, we, can, just, we can't, because, you know, these guys, these donators give us a lot of money, and we can't let them go un celebrated we, we can definitely do that well, let's ca- cross that bridge when we get there we have to okay. let, let, let people know what we're doing here because uh, this is a podcast that uh, we're gonna talk transformers on so let's do that okay i got i got the line in there i had to <laughs> yeah i was leaving it for you <laughs> I, <laughs> charles doesn't have like a, a catchphrase for me he to doesn't steal. but uh as yoshi alluded to we uh we have Donatrions, uh, and uh, we uh, we run this show on donations, and uh, we uh, we don't have any this week, Yoshi. Oh, fuck! I, really? I, I, we got nothing. Well, I was canvassing my area, and uh, and if you know, I've done I've done fairly well. I mean, we've I've got Dogcades, I've got uh, DJ Ronan. I went all the way up and got Doug from from up there in the north end of this province. Right. You know, I think I did pretty well for my my area, my little my little corner of the world. But uh, you know, how how's how's it canvassing down your end going? Look, I've got extended family uh, donating their hard earned monies to this show, but we got nothing. I mean, we really depend on on donator money, and we 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 need more of it. I need more. I can't like this isn't a complete show unless well, we get to announce somebody's giving us money. Yeah, well, we can talk about giving them something. Oh, okay. we should do that. Let's let's talk about the exact opposite direction I want to go. <laughs> let's do that. Go on. Okay. Well, it, we have our our five dollar Donatron tier. We're supposed to give them at least three times a year a quote goodie, and we've been lax on that this year because it's been kind of busy and crazy. We have something coming soon. So if you are at that level, you got a note already to confirm your address, and things are going to be going out. Tomorrow, as we record it, or a couple days ago, as you listen, so you might already have it. So if you get it, take pictures, put it online, let everyone know what you got, and why we're the best podcast. Mm-hmm. Show everyone why they should be a Donatrion. Yes, and we might have something else coming up in a week or so to announce that might get more people to get on the Donatrion train. Mm-hmm. Plus, we're running another contest because you know. Contests are fun, and we like giving away shit. So for anyone that isn't a Donatrion already, become a Donatrion by the end of September. That is September the 30th, and you will be entered to win one of our reissue G1 figures that we are giving away. We are giving away a Starscream, a Devastator, and a Bumblebee. Three separate prizes to be won for our Donatrions. So get in on that, become a Donatrion, and remember, if you're a Donatrion at the duly appointed level, you get two entries into this contest. It's pretty kick-ass. Yes, and that has really come in handy for some of our recent winners. And uh, and, and a lot of our winner or a lot of our Donatrions uh, don't live in Canada, so these uh, these figures seem to be, you know, exclusive to Canada at this very moment, and. Uh, this prize might be one of the best prizes we've ever done because it is such a, a hard to find figure right now. So uh, get in on that. So let's start the show. Let's get into some toy news and our first topic. First up, we have some images 
uh, of a render from Perfect Effect and their PE dash DX dash one zero jet powered revive prime. And it is an entire figure that they're doing. They're not doing an add on this time. Power Perfect Effect is really well known for doing those. Uh, combiner wars figures add on the feet and hands and then the torso add ons and stuff. They've been really good at doing those, but they're throwing their hat into the ring with a, a full figure here. And it's an Optimus Prime uh, stylized from, I believe it's Revenge of the Fallen. Yeah, Revenge of the Fallen. So uh, when he's fully transformed and armored up, he looks like jet fire powered uh, Optimus Prime. Difference is. There's no jet fire here. So the Optimus Prime looks like in alt mode, he looks like a G2 Optimus Prime. So that's the red cab, the cab over Optimus with the black trailer, which is really cool looking. But then when you transform the Optimus Prime, he becomes just a, uh, you know, a kind of a stylized G1 looking Optimus Prime with some flames on his chest and stuff. But the trailer disassembles into jet parts. It's really interesting, and they all kind of combine onto the Optimus to make them into this one huge kind of super robot armored up with a massive underslung gun and a big frickin' axe. It, it's really, really neat. I like the way it looks a lot. Um, I can't, I don't know what the price is going to be on this thing. I can't imagine it's going to be cheap, but it looks really cool. Yoshi, this is a movie-styled figure. With a G1, G2, definitely, alt mode. What are your thoughts on this, man? This, I feel, is one of the, if not the best interpretations of a Bayformer's Optimus Prime. For me, that is a sexy bot. I'm, I'm, I'm seriously impressed by that. And I can't yeah. believe those words are coming out of my mouth. Are you talking uh, about the, the Optimus before the add-on? or just the, Before like the, the add-on. Before the add-on. Optimus before the add-on is uh, is all win in my book. I I like a black G two homage trailer as much as the next guy. I don't care for the militaristic sticker on the back of it. That really bugs me. That bugs the shit out of me. Actually, okay, yeah, uh, and it's awesome. And every cool word you said about the combined jet fire look of this thing. I think you need to apply that to all the work that's going to be required to parts form this thing together. Oh yeah. This, yeah, this is this, not going to be smooth. <laughs> no, I, I feel like you drop a penny on the trailer, it falls apart and then you put all the pieces where they're supposed to go. Uh, and I, I bet even some of the cylindrical uh, pieces are hidden in the cab or in the actual oh, bay, bay of the, uh, the truck there or the, the, the trailer. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, I'm not a fan of, the militaristic sticker and if you're okay with parts forming which seems to be i don't know i feel like parts forming for this character was part of the character part of mm-hmm. the part of that aspect in the movie so it, it probably flies but man i think <laughs> <the> Optim- <laughs> <laughs> i feel like the optimus prime part of this the the cab and and all are sexy as hell if you like that particular interpretation i feel like it's probably the best one we've ever seen cool that's high praise coming from Yoshi. Uh, yeah, Jeremy. I like half a toy you can buy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, that is. It's high praise. You usually <laughs> shit on everything. Jeremy, you got any love for this? Yeah, I mean, I think this looks really good. I, I think the unarmored bot mode is just like, it's a great amalgamation of G1 Prime and Movie Prime. I mean, if you look at it, it's not quite as busy as a movie prime is and you get things like the, the arms and the legs really kind of evoke more of a G one and the head. Well, I guess the head's more of a movie head, Mm -hmm. but the arms specifically, you have like the little red triangle or yellow triangle and stuff. That's that screams G one to me. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it's going to have the metallic paint that, I mean, these are just, you know, CG renders, but the it, the the paint on it kind of has this metallic sheen to it, and I think that really makes it stand out a bit. I, I like that. Mm-hmm. You bring up something when you said metallic paint there, Jeremy. These guys are going out of their fucking way in every picture to make it look like his eyes glow. Yeah, I'm seeing that. I wonder if it, there's a little. I wonder if there's light piping or a battery, but they went out of their way to show us that the eyes are glowing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see that. 
Well, I, I want to, uh, I just noticed something here because I actually have some, the the figure. The Optimus Prime cab uh, appears to be based on the the one that Perfect Effect produced to replace the uh, Optimus Prime cab for the Titans Return Optimus Prime, the one that uh, turned into Jinrai. Mm-hmm. That also they uh, for that same uh, kit or the same figure, they also produced an Optimus Prime add-on head that had an LED in it. So there could be that at play here. It looks to me like they basically reworked that entire cab figure they had and turned it into this Optimus. um, This wouldn't be surprising. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I noticed it because the arms looked very similar to the ones that were on the the original toy that I have. Um, So I kind of looked... You know, great thing financially for them. It's yeah. you know, reusing a lot of stuff and you can still with particularly with the trailer and stuff, you can still command a high price for it. Of course. Yeah. So I, while looking at it again, it, it does appear that it is a, a very similar mold, especially on the cab for version. Now that I look at the cab again and, and, cons- and compare it to the one that I have, uh, the, the alt mode is almost identical to the one that is on the, uh, uh, the Titans return uh, Jin Rai Prime. Now, like I said, the robot mode of that cab is very different. Uh, they've done some serious reworking there. As far as the trailer goes, that's completely new. Obviously, mm-hmm. the uh, the the militaristic, the military sig- sigil on the 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 wings and stuff, Yoshi. That's that's what Jetfire had. He was a jet, a military jet. Well, and it's supposed to kind of evoke the Air Force symbol. Exactly. So, so uh, I can see that um, if it's possible that that could be reversed and you would you wouldn't have to see it on the the outside of the trailer. That would be great. And then it kind of swaps and you can see it on the outside when it's in uh, combined form. That would be that would be even better. But it doesn't look like that's going to be possible. You know, um, it'd, it'd be great if there's like a podcast some people could listen to to learn how to kind of customize and modify their toys. It would be. That would be really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Too bad there isn't. Uh, but there might be if, if people become Donatrions. But uh, but no, I really I really do like the look of this thing. Better than wearing a corpse. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, as I said, there really isn't a uh, a price on this yet. And uh, I'm just, oh, wait, no, there is. <laughs> I'm just looking up at it right now. PX or PEDX10 power, Jet Power Revive from Perfect Effect is on pre order on BBTS for $134.99. So not yep. too bad, I guess. Yes, source has the same price. Yeah. So not too, too, too bad. It's a, it's a, comp- a complete figure plus an, an add on trailer, which, you know, combines into armor, which. I'm sure it's going to be big. So okay, make cool. it 150 and put rubber tires on that. Yeah, that's that is one thing. The uh, the the figure that they the Optimus Prime figure that they did make doesn't have rubber tires. His butt. But yeah, no, that's cool. I do have one more thing. I uh, just talk about quickly. Uh, this is uh, something that you guys had on the list from last week, but neglected to mention. So I'm going to mention it here. I guess it had too much important stuff to talk about. Can't imagine what that would have been. Uh, this is Toy World's TW FS01, the last night, Transformers the Last Night's World War I Bulldog prototype. This is the figure that the, the character that was standing at the castle with Anthony Hopkins in the movie um, that was kind of like the old man robot that was kind of fallen apart and really didn't, was kind of useless. He is a. Like I said, a World War One tank, 1917 model. He transforms into a really cool-looking uh, tank uh, with uh, no turret. The the track uh, the caterpillar treads go completely around the entire thing. Um, there's guns sticking out of the sides. There's a gun in the front, but there's no turret. That's what I meant. Because there, yeah, there's a there's a small gun on the front, but there is no spinning turret. Okay. As as normal tanks uh, nowadays, or for World War Two, would have had, and the uh, the sculpt for the robot mode is actually really really good looking as far as the the model on the the movie goes. Uh, whether or not you're into the 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 movie aesthetic, um, they did a really good job in in recreating that that aesthetic from the the Transformers last night. 
they've got some painted prototypes here. Uh, they've got some some uh, some resin prototypes. Looking at this, guys, uh, would anybody be interested in something like this? I know it's movie stuff, but it's it's kind of an unknown character. Really, didn't get any lines. It was kind of a goofball thing, but the 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 alt mode is really kind of cool. Jeremy, I'm not interested in this character. I'm interested in the vehicle, though. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to see this vehicle used in a future transformer. It's, I mean, we, we really haven't had many world war one era alt modes. I mean, we've had world war two era, like Hound is basically a world war two era Jeep. Sure. Um, any tank can kind of go back to that, but world war one is kind of like so many of these, like tanks were brand new airplanes were brand new. I would love to see some of those vehicles reimagined as transformers. So, I mean, this looks great. I'm just, I mean, the character with the, his stupid hat and mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, I'm just, I'm not digging the, the robot, but the, the tank itself looks really cool. Cool. Yoshi, what do you think? Uh, the Bob mode to me looks like it was done by Hasbro. Okay. You know, and, and maybe once they give it some sort of detail with, with painting, it might not, but it, to me, it just feels like, and, and maybe this is a compliment. If especially if this wants to sit on your shelf with your other movie figures, you know, it's, it just feels like Hasbro did it. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Well, that's all I brought to the show this week. Jeremy, did uh, you find anything? Yeah, I have um, some in hand pictures of punch counter punch, which um, I don't think is even really out yet, mm -hmm. at least for us. And, you know, this, we we speculated when we first got news about this, like, what is this going to be a new mold or reuse or something? And I mean, this is a brand new mold. It has the the faction changing gimmick, and then the car itself looks pretty sweet. It they put the the power of the prime. I guess this is in the power of the primes line, so it has that little kind of hand foot gun thing on it as an accessory. But I'm really digging this. Um, you know, the, the head basically flips around to change between Autobot and Decepticon, or I guess the whole figure itself flips around. This is a character we, we were never expecting to get, and mm -hmm. I'm really liking it. What do you think, Daryl? I'm right there with you. I, I really like it, uh, and I want to thank uh, our editor, Mike, for hooking me up. He, he ordered it for me when I wasn't able to get it here because of my being Canadian. Um yeah, I like the look of it. The alt mode, the car is like super sexy, uh, mm -hmm. really, really curvaceous. The uh, the downside for me, the only downside is uh, Punch Counter Punch came with two guns, a, a, a yellow slash orange gun and a black gun, uh, one for him being an Autobot and one for him being a Decepticon. Um, this one has one gun, an oh, orangey yeah. yellow gun. I would really like him to have the second gun, and I'm sure I'm positive uh there will be a shapeways gun bot somebody will make one and you'll oh, be able to I mean, get be that easy. all set yeah it'll be very simple to do but it would be really nice not to have to do that so um yeah you're right it's coming with a uh a power of the primes figure like a, a prime master prima prime is what who is coming oh, yeah. with and it's, uh, it's coming with yeah it's coming with one of those hand foot uh thingamabobbers too so but i don't think it actually becomes a a hand or a foot right so well, th that I don't think um, counter or punch counter punch can be a combiner at all. No, I don't think but so. But the hand foot thing does look like it'll you can use it with other other figures. Of course, yeah, yeah. No, but I like it. I like it a lot. Well, Yoshi, uh, what do you think about this guy? You know, I I do like it. I think that's a fun little gimmick. Is is anyone else bothered that you can't see an insignia in alt mode? Well, he's supposed to be a spy, so right. <laughs> I, I think that kind of goes along with the character because he has one alt mode, two bot, two bot modes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it, maybe if they had used a rub right. sign, but I also feel like you know I'm looking at the alt mode pictures, and he's not quite tight. He's not. Mm -hmm. He just he looks a little loose, and maybe that's just mistransformation. Maybe that's let's get these photos done and get the fuck out of here and go home. I don't know. Uh, well, I, mean, I think a, these are um, these are not official pictures. Oh. Either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I do this, like the this, idea. I, I do. I do. Th he he's a sexy looking bot. I do like the gimmick. 
a lot, actually. So yeah, it's it's not total garbage to me. Cool. Well, who is this Yoshi that's on the show? Mean, <laughs> you know what? Uh, this I might be. Charles might be channeling me after that intro. <laughs> so let's. I'll try and be more of an asshole with the next one. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on. Uh, we have a. I guess this is a 3D render still, but it's um, X Transbots G1 Sideswipe in their little mini scale. And this, I mean, the robot mode, I mean, it's very simple, but it's G1 Sideswipe. He's got the shoulder cannon. He's got a hand, uh, he's got a, a pistol. But what really, like, I really like about this is the car mode. I mean, it, it's a, you know, your Lamborghini Countach, but they even have the gimmick where the doors and I, mean, I guess it's the trunk that's the front for the Lamborghini. Is that right? Trunk. Yeah. Yeah. And that opens up in the front. That's just not a gimmick I would have expected on a legend scale figure. This is definitely a figure that I'm going to try to pick up because I, I like sound. I like, um, I like sideswipe and, and I like these legend scale figures. Uh, Yoshi, what about you? You, you like this? I do like this. Um, I'm trying not to see his shoulder cannon because it seems oversized. But it, he's got a compensate. It, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but no, he's very, very. He screams nostalgia. I really like him a lot. But you know, I'm, I've enjoyed these smaller figures too from from the get go. So yeah, I guess uh, I guess you could lose me on the face. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell from these renders, but. No, I'm stoked, man. I mean, this this thing does look beautiful. Daryl, you're our resident car guy. How how do you think they did on the car mode? Oh, the car mode looks great. The only part that kind of sticks out to me is when I'm looking at the all uh, the bot mode, the uh, the car uh, front as the chest is just a. I mean, it's it's a little thin, um, which uh, which kind of you know uh, it you got to kind of take your pick your battles when you're when you're working with these figures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he it just looks a little thin which kind of makes the character look a little thin. But then when you get to to alt mode, it looks really nice. So, yeah, I mean, it'll be neat to see it in uh, full production uh to see how it looks. Um and I'm curious to see if uh if they manage to 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 keep the shoulder cannon there during transformation. I doubt it. It but... looks like uh, it clips on. If you look at uh, one of the back angled shots, you can kind of see it looks okay. like there's a clip there, like a C clamp. Right. But yeah, no, I like it. It looks, it looks really neat. Uh, that is all I got. How about you, Yoshi? Okay. Uh, I believe it's pronounced Jada toys metals. Dyke has a die cast G one Optimus prime. Um, this guy is cute. Uh, he doesn't transform cause it's not made from Hasbro. Right, Daryl? Uh, that's right. That's, I mean, that's a Hasbro thing. Like you can make transformers as long as transform. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, this is a, this is a guy that sells for under seven bucks. I think it's worth, uh, pointing out the pettiness here. Uh, according to the article, somebody in Arkansas found this at target for six ninety nine. And Walmart, being Walmart, uh, has one for has it for six ninety seven. Yeah, that's what Walmart does there. Yeah, because two pennies. Like I'm going to drive across town for two pennies. I don't know. Um, you know, I'm I'm very interested in this guy, and I think this is one of those things that for seven bucks you really can't go wrong with it. I have seen the movie verse, uh, the the Babe Formers version of the truck. Uh, here locally but i haven't seen the g1 truck yet. and uh the bottom side of this guy has an image of what he would look like in bot mode uh because he's not allowed to transform but uh we're sporting the rubber tires we're sporting the classic 80s look uh i think with a little bit of ingenuity he could even be a be a christmas ornament if you wanted him to be <laughs> um, it's not it's not terrible uh it's got some classic art on the box i think this is a uh, I think this would be an impulse have to buy if I ever see it. I'm not going to go out of my way and order it online. What do you think, Daryl? Oh, it's it's neat for sure. I don't know whether like stuff that's seven bucks for you is like eleven for me. So 
it's uh, gets over that ten dollar mark. Uh, you know, it makes it a little bit more dire uh, or dear. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's a nice looking figure or, uh, or dinky car, I guess. It's a little bigger than a Hot Wheels or a Matchbox. It looks like the rubber tires and the die cast. Uh, it it looks nice. It's something that uh, that would be a neat little thing. I, I wish there was somebody at Hasbro just walking toy aisle and be just to stop me. And be like, why'd you get that figure? Rubber tires, motherfucker. Rubber tires. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Jeremy, will you be adding this guy to your to your collection? I'm not gonna go out of my way to buy it like you mm-hmm. you said you. I mean, but if I see it in the store, I got seven bucks to 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 spend burning a hole in your pocket. Yeah, I I'll, I might pick it up. It. I, I do have, um, a, as a gift, I was given um, when my wife went with some of her family to Taiwan last year. They came back, and there was, like, these, these little Matchbox-style cars from the car that did the same gimmick where it's, a you know, the car, and then you flip it, the bottom of it, and it has the robot picture on it. And I would say this is the same quality, which is fine. So I might pick it up if I see it, but it, the paint looks great. I, I do love the box, the, you know, very homaging the, the G1 prime box with some of the art there. You've got the classic logo and, you know, it's a stark contrast in that picture, seeing it next to the, the Bay former one. Yeah. Just the boxes themselves are, you know, like, here's the good logo. Here's the bad logo. It's it's definitely bigger than a Hot Wheels car. Not that much bigger. I don't. Well, it's a there's a Matchbox box right beside it. There is. That looks like it's a box that holds multiple figures, though. That's true. But yeah, it looks like there's yeah they've got a few in the movie line because I see in that picture there's a Bumblebee behind it. But mm-hmm. I, I like seeing these G one. Um, that G1 that ones. oh no, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Never mind. Yeah, I see the Bumblebee. All right. Uh, next up, we discovered, uh, I think it was uh, uh, someone in our, our Discord chat pointed us to uh, a YouTube channel, Toy Galaxy, that did a story on the Bumble Jumper G1 uh, fiasco. Um, I watched this video. Did you guys watch it? Yeah. Yep. It was, uh, I've, I've, seen, I've seen Toy Galaxy's other videos, mostly the Transformer ones, but I've watched a couple of others. Definitely put a lot of time and effort into researching this. And uh, this is probably the most detailed story on Bumble Jumper you're ever going to see. I don't know if you could get more detailed than this. And and there's some aspects to how Bumble, Bumble Jumper came to be that they just kind of have to assume or guess what happened. Uh, what did you think of this, Daryl? Oh, I liked it. Um as we were talking about when we were planning the show, I actually do own a Bumble Jumper, so it's nice to, you know, nice to hear about the history uh, once again. I, um, I all already was aware of how uh, uh, the the story did go about, but there there was some stuff in there that uh, kind of you know uh, mentioned how the uh, the the vehicle or the the figure was actually made into production in different countries uh, on purpose and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and how it was like it was white in some countries, uh, and that's you know it was called sedan somewhere. Uh, I think it was South America. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it it was really interesting. There was some some really good information in there. So if you you know you were always curious as to why Bumble Jumper um, existed, then that's a really good interesting watch for you. It also mentioned how uh, how IDW and Dreamwave took a finally grabbed a hold of it and made it a character um when in the comic books uh you know when they were running yeah. dreamwave more than idw they they said idw he was essentially killed almost immediately by megatron yeah but he's there he's canon yeah hmm it's pretty cool i know i know doug in our discord chat and donator uh he likes to collect all these different uh, versions of b that have come out so, yeah, I think that's all I've got, Daryl. All right. Well, that was good. Let's, uh, I guess we're going to move on now to trips to the store. And this is a part of the show where we go over to YouTube and do some video stuff. And we talk about all the cool Transformer stuff we got for the week. 
and uh, show it off on YouTube. But you can continue listening here, but we'd really appreciate it if you checked it out on YouTube and saw what we got instead of just listening. Anyway, here goes Trips to the Store. Transmissions wouldn't be what it is today without the awesome support of our listeners. If you'd like to support our shows and enjoy the exclusive benefits that our donors get, please visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Let's go, Yoshi. What do you got this week, bud? Well, remember the diecast G1 Optimus Prime we were talking about earlier? No. Okay. Yeah. That's good, because that's not what I have. Uh, I don't know if I've ever shown this before, but this is an unopened school kit, uh, which contains a pencil pouch, a ruler, a pencil sharpener, and eraser. Uh, I know Prove I've it. shown. I'm no, yeah. <laughs> I know I've shown this off because I have one that's opened, but this one isn't opened. And very uh, appropriate for the time of the year. <laughs> very much so. And also, I have nothing new. So uh, just enjoy some of this lenticular ruler action, if you will. Open it. Open <laughs> it. Open Look, it. The part of Charles will be played by me today, and uh, as Charles. Since Charles is in Germany, I'm also declaring diplomatic immunity. Uh, because of the standards that are expected by our donators, I will not be opening this thing since I am in Charles' shoes tonight, apparently. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That's what I got, Daryl. I'm sure, having been at Fan Expo, you can't even come close to matching this vintage, unopened awesomeness. I... I- I can't. But we'll go to Jeremy next to see what he's got. Jeremy, what do you got, bud? I, I just have some comics this week. Uh, it's going to be quick. I have Optimus Prime number 23, the Kazama cover. and Lacking a bag. All of these are lacking a bag. Fuck you, dude. I'm glad <laughs> Straight up, fuck you for not paying attention. <laughs> I have Unicron number four. Sands bag. And I have Lost Light number 23, which we will be talking about in alt mode this week. Sands bag. Cool. When you go to TFCon to collect your sketch covers, I insist you let me do it. <laughs> I, I will because have, you cannot. I, I will have protection then. <sighs> don't worry. I, no. I don't go to conventions without protection. We all bring protection to conventions. <laughs> but that is all I got this week, so let's go on to all the Transformers stuff Daryl has. Well, I did go to Fan Expo. Um, I didn't buy a lot of Transformers stuff there. In fact, I don't think I bought any Transformers stuff there. Um, but so I do have some to show. Oh, bye, everybody. No. Um, uh, I did have a comic from last week, and uh, this is the Bumblebee number three, cover B. Uh, this is, I think, this, oh, this is Fico Osio's uh, cover. It looks pretty cool. Not bad. Um, this is Optimus Prime number 23 from this week. This is Casey Collar's cover. Pretty good. Bagged. They're bagged. Yeah, but you use those cheap quality boards. No, they're good. Uh, and this is uh, this is Lost Light 23, which apparently we're talking about this week. Uh, this is cover B. This is the uh, Jeff Senior cover. And uh, and I did get uh, Unicron number four. So this is Unicron number four. This is the Alex Milne cover. I really like that a lot. This is the James Reyes cover. And this is the Guido Guidi cover. This one's kick ass. Ooh, that is sexy as hell. Mm hmm. I Damn. like that one. I might have to look for that one. That's a pretty killer cover. Optimus uh, falling uh, in space. I don't know how that's possible, but yeah, he's falling. Uh, anyway, that's really cool. I like I like those three covers. Um, really. Maybe look- he's being sucked up. May- oh. Yeah, he, he's trying to get away. Yeah. So uh, I do have a Transformer. Uh, I've had this one in the kind of in my pocket for a little while. Uh, this That's is not a the best G1. place to keep your Transformers. Well, well, when you see what it is, you'll know that it's it fits. Uh, this is a MicroMaster. 
Uh, this is <laughs> so there's, there's plenty of room in your pocket for that. That's right. This is <laughs> space shot. <laughs> Yes, you get it. It was a joke. Sp space shot. All right. Yoshi's <laughs> killing himself, laughing at his own jokes, which is always very funny. Um, anyway, space shot is half of a alt mode for um, the Decepticon anti-aircraft base, which is this thing here. Um, uh, it is not complete. There is a lot missing on this thing. So, including the other half of the uh, the figure, which is uh, Blackout. So, um, the other half of the plane guy. This thing opens up. There's a few pieces in here, but I do have to figure out what I'm actually still missing because uh, it's... Uh, it's pretty cool. I've been I've been really interested in getting a lot of these MicroMaster guys because they're fun, um, little neat little bases and stuff. But uh, yeah, so I got that, and I do want to show off one thing that I did get from Fan Expo. This is not Transformers related. Thanks for watching, but, guys. We'll talk to you. Later. But it is uh, but it is pretty cool. This is my signed Guardians of the Galaxy Nebula figure by Karen Gillian. Uh, I am pretty happy with this. Uh, I met a movie star. I was pretty pretty happy about that. So, yeah. Anyway. Screw you all. I met a movie star. Anyway. That's all for this week. All right, and welcome back to the show. That was Trips to the Store. We had a lot of fun. Uh, too bad Yoshi had to leave early. He uh, bitched out. But uh, we're going to put him to work here. Um we're going into feedback. So before we jump into feedback, I just want to let everybody know you can leave us feedback by going to transmissionspodcast.com slash feedback. There you've got multiple ways of contacting us, email, Twitter, social media, voicemails, and you can let us know specifically how much you hate when Daryl shows us a non-Transformers item. Knock yourself out. We're all ears and we'll read everything because we're that cool. But starting now, we're going to our email where we've got something from Toxic Wheels regarding episode 291. And Mr. Wheels writes, Hello, Transmissions team. It's Toxic Wheels in response to your email. One of my favorite Transformers to just fiddle around with would have to be Transformers The Last Night Barricade and or Animated Blitzwing. I love that they include the three-face gimmick just like he had on the show. I sometimes pose him with his crazy face, the black one with the red eyes and the jack-o'-lantern mouth, and his body in Gundam style, hashtag Blitzwing style. I do, however, have some sad news. I was transforming my masterpiece Cheetor figure for a photo shoot while trying to move his arm pad, which makes the back of the cheetah mode. The swivel joint was so tight that the post that holds it up started to crack. I took him to my mom since she is the tape glue and staple queen to hopefully get him fixed. This raises the question, have any of you had any problems like this? And if so, how would you fix it? Well, I'll stop right there in your email, uh, Toxic Wheels, and I'll throw that to Daryl. How would you fix Cheetor, Daryl? Well, uh, this is exactly why we made the most recent declassified uh, Toxic Wheels. Uh, this was uh, the uh, entire topic. It was but, all about uh, Cheetor <laughs> and fixing Cheetors? Well, we, we had a very big section on the most recent one, which was Dinobot, which has uh -huh. a very tight, uh, a tight section on him as well. Cheetor would have to what we would do is uh we would like look for some kind of uh area to lubricate and uh guests on the the declassified evangelist suggested using shock oil so uh something like but, that like RC car uh, shock oil that's right so I would definitely look at uh doing something like that um in a pinch you can use uh, dish soap for a temporary fix uh, very sparingly or crushed up uh hand soap uh, again, very sparingly, but uh, uh, shock oil is what you're going to want to use. What about but, in this case where it it started to crack? So it's like it's already broken. Well, I mean, it's, it it's seems hanging like he, on by a thread. It sounds. It seems like. like he he stopped as soon as he noticed. 
Well, I mean, fixing broken plastic is not easy, but you can you can fix it. Um, generally, what you would want to do is you would want to get that pin out of there if it is a pin joint, and uh, and and get it out of the way and fix the plastic. But uh, you can do that a number of ways. Uh, you can use epoxy. You can use. You don't really want to use super glue. You can you can in a pinch, but uh, a new product to the market is Gorilla Glue. That's very good. It's kind of taken over for for super glue. Super glue. Yeah, there's a number of things to fix it. Why is Gorilla Glue better than super glue? It's thicker. Uh, where glue, where super glue is a very thin liquid, mm-hmm. Gorilla Glue is like a uh, like a paste. So you can you get more control over it. Plus, it's a stronger adhesive. So yeah, Gorilla Glue is a little better. But um, but yeah, generally when you got cracked plastic, you're gonna want to fix it before you do anything else. Yeah, and it's never gonna be as good as it was. So uh, look at that. But I would definitely look at uh, at getting access to uh, the the declassified number twelve. If you aren't a, a, a Patreon, then uh, then hold on for uh, when the uh, the the show gets to that one hundred Patreons because we're very or, very close. Or donate a buck. <laughs> or donate a buck. And you can get access to it because it is it's a marathon show, but there is an insane amount of uh, info in there. We uh, yes. we cover a lot of topics. Yeah. It just in listening to it while I was editing it, I was like, wow, this is a lot of really good stuff. Yeah. Cool. Well, the postscript to Toxic Wheels' email uh, goes, do any of you have any websites that you would recommend for missing Transformers accessories, i.e. guns, missiles, or perhaps even a replacement rock cover for Return of the Fallen Long Haul? Rock cover is the part of the dump truck that covers the cab. Going to have to go back to you again, Daryl. There used to be one. Uh, unfortunately, it no longer uh, there. Um, oh, my God. eBay's gone? Yeah, no. eBay is probably your only bet. But uh, you can always you can always look at uh, local like collectible stores if they buy large lots of toys. As far as sites go, there's none really that I can think of. You can Is always con- land? You can contact a place like Transformerland. Yes, um, you can contact places like uh, like eBay sellers, people like Wheeljack's Lab or uh, Prime Target 08. Um, because they they buy large large amounts of stuff, uh, albeit they're mostly both of those guys are both mainly G one, but they're going to come across lots of mainline stuff or, or or modern stuff anyway. But the uh, the issue lies in the fact that a lot of the stuff you're looking for is very new, and the value of it isn't going to be worth the cost of the figure when you're completing it. Right. So let me explain it like this. So say you got the rock cover for Revenge of the Fallen Long Haul. What's the Revenge of the Fallen Lock Haul, Long Haul worth complete? If I'm thinking of the same figure you're thinking of, it's probably worth maybe twenty five dollars at most, at absolute most. So what's the person going to charge for a rock cover? Right. Most people are going to want to charge five bucks. Maybe more, maybe seven. Digs into the, uh, the 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 amount that you can actually you actually want to buy that for because the the end result is not a figure that's going to be worth very much. That's why parts are much more limited for resale when when it comes to G one um, because the 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 completed figure is worth mu- that much more. So yeah, selling selling new age parts is is quite difficult because you really just you have to sell them for almost nothing which is 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 just not good business. It might be something where you could find it at a convention if there's like a seller that just has like bins of parts. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe just, they have the same figure with that piece not broken. Mm-hmm. Basically, I would put a uh, an eBay uh, reminder to search eBay for, you know, Revenge of the Fallen Long Haul and just keep searching it until you find one that's part of an, a lot or something like that that has the piece that you need. Because it is a very commonly lost part, so um, I would I would generally expect to 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 find one that's just either has it and and is part of a, a lot for something else. But good luck. Cool, thank you, Daryl. Next up, uh, we have an email from Donator Scott, who uh, who won our uh, was one of the winners of our mega contest. 
And Scott writes, hey, guys, first of all, I love the show. Second, quick piece of feedback. When you all were discussing the War for Cybertron siege poster, Jeremy mentioned that it was odd that Starscream wasn't in the middle of the Seeker formation. When I was checking out the G1 cartoon in uh, intro on YouTube for nostalgia, I noticed that the first time we see the Seekers there, Thundercracker is flying in the middle lead position. So for the poster... Uh, so for the new poster, so the new poster has an homage of sorts to the original cartoon. Just some, just something I thought that was kind of interesting. That is really interesting. Yeah, that's a, a neat point. I, it's been so long since I've actually paid attention to, you know, what plane was what in the the cartoon intro. I just, I had no idea it, that, it, that was an homage. It, your gut reaction when you see those seekers is is. One Sorry. everyone would have, yeah. yeah. Everyone would have that reaction. So um, that's a really good um, point that I haven't seen many other people point out. Yeah, cool. Uh, I would like to thank you for your money, Scott. And hope you're enjoying your Cogman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, now we go to Discord. We're just moments before we were recording. Psycho Saber uh, left us uh, a bit of a question. Since the transmissions team is doing a podcast today, I have a feedback question. If the transmissions team, including the guy who edits the episodes, uh, forgive me for I don't recall his name. His name is Mike. Mike is a god. Don't forget Mike's name ever again. Uh, Let's see. uh, If the transmissions team were a combiner team, who would be the leader? Who would and uh, and what would your combined form name be? Hmm. I think we kind of talked that it would be Charles would be the leader, didn't we? Mm, He has 97 percent. Yeah, yeah, he does. He has controlling shares. And he um, would make up the entire torso. Would we be called Donator Tron? <laughs> Not if Charles is in charge. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Figure since it would be a like a, a could be a toy. I I could make up both legs <laughs> and the uh, the lower half because it feels like I carry the toy section on my I I feel like a pelvis though. I feel like I own the thrusting ability that we would require. Do you? No. (laughs) (laughs) My, I think Mike needs to be the head though. Mike, Mike, uh, you know, he, he, he puts the show together for us every week, twice a week. Mm -hmm. Make it Mike, Mike the head and both Yoshi and Jeremy are the arm. But like, what would we call ourselves since we're, Let's see, we're we're podcasters, mostly American, we collect toys. Is there a name in any of that stuff we could jumble together? Naming anything is one of my very weak spots. Hmm. Daticus, we're all dads. Oh, well, Mike isn't. <laughs> he has a cat, I think. That's a terrible name. I know. Well, I'm just throwing shit out there. Nobody else is talking. Uh, transmis- trans- Transmissitron. Transmissitron, transmission cast, castatron. I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time on this. Castimus Maximus. I don't know. Maybe our our listeners have a better idea. That would be great. Somebody, some. Well, shit. We can't do that. So you know what? Whoever in the in the chat comes up with the best name, we'll title the episode that. How's that sound, Jeremy? I think that sounds great. That Fine, sounds, sold. That sounds dangerous. It is dangerous because what do we have there? Asimus. I'm 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 on board. <laughs> And that is it for feedback, everybody. Uh, again, please visit us at transmissionspodcast.com slash feedback. Uh, you've got all kinds of ways to let us know how you feel about us. Uh, so you should you should exercise your right as an individual to do that. And uh, I'll with that, I'll throw it back to Daryl, who is in control of this episode. Apparently. Uh, all right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, remember that you can donate via Patreon or PayPal to transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Uh, please subscribe to r- and rate us on iTunes. That's Apple Podcasts. It should be changed. Yes. Somebody do that. Stitcher and uh, Google Play. Does anyone listen to us on Google Play? No. Um, actually, um, that should be changed to Google Podcasts, which I mean, Google oh doesn't even care about. Motherfucking A. Goodness. Who's putting this shit together? I think you made this. Uh, no, I think I did. <laughs> You're right. Um, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Check out uh, our Discord. You can find it uh, and join it. It's free to join. I, I don't know if you're not uh, joining and checking the, out the Discord. I don't know why. Uh, transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. 
pretty easy to go. Like I said, it's free. And we, we've got the download numbers. We know you're out there. You're just not chatting with us. Yeah, it's it's fun. fun. I mean, all week, people are around having fun. Yeah, talking talking smack, sl- slinging shit at Yoshi. It's fun. Correct me, Charles. We do it. Uh, and always send feedback to us. We uh, we like feedback on the show. We have an uh, we have the ability to record a message, and you can we'll play it on the show because that's fun. And uh, we uh, we don't want to have to read. Yoshi doesn't like reading, so we don't want to read. Um, and uh, do that with uh, feedback at transmissionspodcast.com for email feedback. But just go to the website, and uh, there's a little widget there. We can record. All right. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Later, donators. Thanks for listening to Transmissions. Remember, you can help support the show by donating to us directly via Patreon or PayPal. Once you become a donor, you will receive access to donor-only goodies, like donor-only contests, listening to us record Transmissions live, and getting Transmissions swag at 20% off. You can find links for this at transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Subscribing to us on Stitcher, iTunes, and Google Play is also a great way to support us here at Transmissions. Every subscription we get helps us get better noticed on those services. Leaving us a comment and five-star review doesn't hurt either. Be sure to come chat with us on Discord. You will find a link for Discord at transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. And of course, you can always send us an email at feedback at transmissionspodcast.com. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week. Go to hell, Craig. (laughs) Sloppy bitch. Let's extend that. There's no reason for a soundboard. Did we record it on Canada Day? Maybe. Otherwise known in America as my birthday. (laughs) <laughs> today's canada day i know did you get jeremy anything <laughs> i know it's like the entire country should be getting right i don't know you playing a thing i don't know what you're doing well, you you said you start going into a topic i thought <clears throat> so michael fix it there we go perfect mike is all right it. hold on all right butt. you ready to Crazy read you little yogurt. bitch and uh, now we're going to move on to uh, <clears throat> Donator Cogman, also known as Scott, also known as one of our mega he, contest he was, winners. He won Cogman. He won. Oh, oh, I see. I, OK, I'm going to redo that, Mike. So when I'm not on the show next week, we we all know why. Right. <laughs> I got to do this for another fucking show now.